Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. So uh, it's May 25th today, and uh, yesterday was supposed to be our, our last frost-free day. And uh, last night we had frost, and we're forecast for frost again tonight. But as you can see here, my peas, my celery, and my carrots are all doing fine. Um, so there's some things that you can definitely be planting out before your last frost. And I've done nothing to cover this bed. I've done nothing to protect it. And we've had some very cold nights and very cold days. This is the first day I could be out here uh, without a coat on and not just shivering. Um, but uh, things are looking pretty good in the garden here already. And we haven't even got through all of our frosts. I wanted to just show you real quick this won't be a very long video, but I just wanted to show you real quick um, how well the tomatoes are doing in these cozy coats and you know how things like onions and celery and peas and carrots and garlic and all those things, how well they really do handle um, the cold weather. We've been getting down um, below the freezing mark, just, just nicely below it um, at night and uh, had a few frosts in the last week and we've been, you know, barely warming up at all uh, during the day. So it's definitely been a cool week and uh, the plants are, are still looking good and fine. So I just thought I'd give you a really quick look at this and some of the other things in the garden and uh, just let you know how it's going. So here's a closer look at the uh, bed I was just sitting beside here. And uh, now these plants haven't done a whole lot. This is uh, the carrots and the peas at the back there were planted, I'm trying to remember now, I think it was in early April. And they just sprouted just before this cold weather hit us, this new cold weather hit us. So they haven't had a lot of warmth to start really growing a whole lot. The carrots will want a little bit more warm weather, but you can see they're just fine. And the cool weather actually I think helps uh, for getting them germinated in a way because the soil is not drying out as easily and as quickly. The peas, they don't really mind the cool weather at all. In fact, I think they quite like it. So they're growing quite nicely now that they've come up and uh, had something nibbling on them a little bit, but no damage from the frost. And the celery I put out, it's been out in my cold frame for quite a while, but I just planted it just um, early last week and then we've had like lots of cold weather and uh, it's doing just fine. Lots of celery growing along here. Doesn't mind at all. I have more celery in another bed. I'll show that to you in a minute. Here's the t tomatoes in the cozy coats here. And I did uh, just kind of paint a couple of them shut uh, just to keep them closed a little bit um, but you can see it's not totally closed they're still open and they're not all pinned but the plants are looking just fabulous they have no idea that it's gotten so cold out that's the Japanese black trefelli that's the ones I lost last year in the cold weather, but they weren't actually inside a cozy coat last year. They're just between some. And even some of the plants are sticking out of the cozy coats. They've grown right up and past the cozy coats already. They love these things. Um, and uh, they don't mind because the cozy coat is still giving off that heat even up, you know, in this area here. So it's not, uh, it's still giving some protection even to these parts of the plants that are sticking up a little bit. You can see that, no damage on that. Absolutely no damage. And no damage here at all either. So they're doing just fine. And the onions are doing just fine in there. Garlic, of course, garlic doesn't mind the cold weather at all, so it's looking great. Here's where I said I had more celery. This celery is a lot more exposed. Uh, so as soon as the sun shines in the morning, it's hitting it. Um, 
that other bed with peas and carrots that I showed you. Um, it's shaded in the early part of the morning, so the frost has uh, melted off before the sun hits it, which can be most damaging. A few potatoes coming up. And they're looking fine. Um, even if they get a little bit of frost on this top growth and it does die back, it won't harm the plant underneath. So I'm not worried about that. A few more onions down here. That's a, a weed, but it's a fireweed, I believe, growing there. I think that's what it's called. I, it has a really pretty flower, um, so I'm just leaving it. So it's just a, a native plant here, letting it grow for now. My brassicas are actually looking a little better with this cool weather, uh, but they're still not looking great. And I've actually replanted some, some new plants because the flea beetles came up in here. There's tons on top that couldn't get in and then there's a lot inside and I actually sprayed this bed down with a, an organic um, insecticidal soap just to try and knock their numbers down a bit because it was just, it was, you, you couldn't grow anything. I've never had to do that but it was just crazy. Hopefully you can see those a little bit there. There's kohlrabi, there's a cauliflower back there some cabbage. Now this bed here, again I had planted peas and carrots in. I planted these just within a week of uh, this last cold snap. And I'll pull the, the netting off. You can see just how how nicely they have grown. I mean, these crops love cold weather. The carrots are gonna look a little bit funky, a little stretched, and that's because, I'll show you here, I had these uh, cocoa pot liners that are just ratched, but I had them laid out um, in a single layer on top of where I'd put the carrots. I just had them on there just to help keep uh, the soil moist um, and a little bit cooler because we were having really hot days when I when I did these and you can see I have little rows of vermiculite there too to help keep them moist and then we got that really bad cold snap and I had kind of forgotten I'd done that and one day I came out here and I was like oh no so I pulled that up and the carrots were trying to grow through the the cocoa fiber mats there so, but that's really, that worked really well, those uh, cocoa mats. So I'll probably maybe try and save those to use again. But the peas are coming in real strong too. It's looking really nice. Now, the trees are losing all their flowers. So now in these little mini raised, fabric raised beds, you can see how well things are growing. And I mean, this is just netting on top. There was nothing else protecting these from the cold. And these are the little, if you watched uh, one of my recent videos, I showed how I took just some, some saved um, onions that were just really small that I had that were starting to sprout They're from, that I'd grown last year. And so I planted them. I'm hoping these will go to seed and uh, I'll get some seed from these two varieties here. That's my hope. And then I've planted um, some evergreen hardy onions that are supposed to come back every year. And they're up and coming along very nicely. There's some kohlrabi over here. It's looking good and a couple of flea beetles in here but not nearly as much damage as over in that other bed. Um, I think the other bed has just had been up for that many more years that I think there's flea beetles that have overwintered in it and came up in the soil whereas this is a brand new bed so nothing's come up in here. Just down the bed a little further here. So this is spinach and all of the spinach I had started um, early in small pots and then planted out after I built these beds, or filled these beds, I guess. And they're doing really nice. This is a really nice spinach. This is Escalade spinach. 
Tried it for the first time last year. It's a really nice spinach. It doesn't get too tough and uh, it doesn't seem to bolt as easily as as some other spinaches that we can have here. So it's delicious. So, and then this end here, if you've seen some of my other videos, I'd put a few kale that I'd grown in here, but um, I think that hot weather got to it. And you can see how this one soaker hose, I don't know what I've done here, but it, I'm gonna have to open this up one day now that the weather's getting a bit better again and figure out why it wants to be over here and I can't get it moved over. Must have it stuck somewhere. Anyway, so I don't think there was water getting in this end very well. And then we had all that hot weather and um, the kale just died. So I had some lettuce planted too thickly in another pot. So I just popped some in here, separated it out a little bit. I just did that a couple days ago in this cold weather. So we'll see how it does. Over here is my beets. I think you can see all of those. Um, so it starts over way down here. Um, there's there's uh, golden beets along here. Now, again, I don't know why I put these, I put them out as starts that were multi-sown in, in seed trays and why I put them so close to sides, I have no idea, but I did. And so this is golden and this is red ace and this is fresh pack. And I don't know if it's, like if something is in here eating on them, it kind of looks like it is. I've never seen anything in here. And these haven't been covered half the time and they're fine, and the golden ones. But my red ace, and I actually have Merlin that was planted down, down at the side there, and they're all gone. And so I really don't know what happened there, but the fresh pack and the golden Detroit, I think that's what they're called. Yeah, um, they look great. So I might have to come in and reseed the uh, Merlin and the, the Red Ace here, but it seems really odd to me. I don't think it was the cold that took them because then the rest would be showing, but at the same time, they've all been netted the same way. So I'm not sure what's happened there. You can see I have more kohlrabi here. Again, it looks like something got in here and nibbled on a couple, but I have no idea what it was. Um, I haven't been really careful about netting these down, um, like pinning the nets down or anything. So I, I guess maybe something's gotten in there and has been eating, but I haven't seen the culprit yet. And then here, um, I seeded uh, some some radish and I decided to put in just a few few turnip seeds as well. Um, I usually don't have good luck with turnips. I find the flea beetles get to them so that well maybe in this bed they'll do better. Um, so I have French breakfast radishes here, um, Easter egg here, um, purple oh this is purple prince this is turnips here and then this is early snowball turnips here. So the early snowball are looking pale and spindly. And I'm wondering, um, there's a little bit of shade that hits the side and I'm wondering if they're just not getting the same light um, as the rest are there. But things are looking pretty good. I mean, the cold hasn't bothered any of this at all. This uh, purple prince is getting its uh, true leaves on it. So overall, it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to need to get uh, these pots refilled. And this is where my, my uh, peppers are going to go this year and my eggplants, I think, too. And I had a lot of trouble with these last year um, with them not staying wet enough and the water just seeming to drain right out of them. And I couldn't figure it out. But then this year, I was kind of digging around and I don't know if you'll be able to see, there's a lip, like I see, I can st stick my finger and I'm still hitting soil. Like it's quite, quite deep lip that bulges out down here on the side of the pot. And that didn't have soil packed in it. I don't know 
why I'd put a lot of um, partially decomposed compost. I don't know if it decomposed faster on those edges and broke down and left air pockets or if I just hadn't packed it in well last year. So I don't know if it's, you know, why they had those, those air gaps in them last year, but every single pot, I've gone through every single one of them now, every pot has had that. So I've had to go through, I've taken the top layer out just so I could get down to that and packed it in really tight into that area. And uh, then I'll have to top these pots back off again with some fresh soil. Um, and then they'll be ready to put my, my peppers and my eggplant in. So hopefully that solves that problem because I didn't have that problem the year before when I grew potatoes in them. So I think I had changed the soil out from from year one to year two. I can't even remember why I did that, but I did. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that this solves that problem because I really don't want that to be a problem. I really like these pots and I'd like to not have to mess around with them every year. So that's what's happening with these so far. My bags of potatoes are just kind of hanging out. I saw, as you can see, some sprouts, but I mean, these potatoes here had really long sprouts on them. So I think the water's just, from all the rain we've had, has just beat that down. So they're sticking up there. And then the rest are just underneath this bed because the water was kind of running through it. And so I was just letting them collect some of that water up. I've pulled them out and there's nothing um, happening in them yet that I can see on any of them. But uh, we'll just keep waiting and when they start to grow up, then I'll start adding some more soil and compost on top there to, to keep mounding them up till they get to the tops. So far all I'm growing in here is weeds, <laughs> but uh, now that it looks like we're finally going to start getting some warm weather coming up here, uh, I will be planting beans in here. I'm going to have my, I believe it's going to be black turtle beans and uh, burgundy beans and some yellow wax beans going in here and we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, first I'm going to have to get the weeds pulled out of here. Put in all fresh soil and compost this year because these are brand new uh, fabric raised beds. Uh, you may have seen the video where I built these or well filled them. <laughs> so uh, this is brand new to me this year and uh, we'll be finding out how beans do in them. But it looks like so far the uh, weed seeds that were in the uh, compost are quite happy. So I'll have to weed this and once it warms up and it's staying warm at night, I'll, I'll get these planted with the beans. It's actually quite warm in there. I'm wondering, um, once, uh, once we're past this, uh, what looks like to be our last frost, I'll probably plant a few beans in here just to see, see how it goes. Uh, because the soil felt warm when I had my fingers in there and the air is quite warm in there. Beans like it to be warm before they get planted out. I might experiment with that a little bit. So this week while it was uh, raining and freezing raining and threatening to snow and just being miserable, I uh, took some time and planted out uh, some peat pots uh, with some different types of squash and uh, some cucumbers and other kind of warm season crops that could get a little bit of a head start but don't want to have too, too big of a root system going before you transplant them out. So that's what's going to be going in this bed and the bed behind me as well as some corn. Um, so things, things are coming along here in the garden uh, even though it maybe doesn't look quite like it yet but for for where we are in my season, in my climate, this isn't too bad. We've just, just passed our last frost date and um, it looks like I'll be able to be planting uh, some of the warm season crops soon. So keep coming back and checking things out and before we know it, these beds will all be full of lush, beautiful crops that I'll be harvesting off of. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.